All right, guys, what is up? I am doing that 30 day Skillshare challenge where I try to do a Skillshare challenge every day for 30 days or multiple if I have the time to do it. So I'm starting today off with simple sign painting, hand paint your house numbers. This is a class by Kelly Spencer. So we're gonna, basically I've already kind of gone through the overview of the class. So I'm not gonna give away what all the steps are in the class. Obviously you need to go take them. This is not sponsored by Skillshare. This is just a challenge I want to do. Uh, while I'm looking for work right now, it's been a hard time finding any freelance work or anything like that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to learn as much as I can until I find a new gig. So working with some enamel paints today, uh, I have a bit of a background and knowledge on sign painting already, and I know the materials pretty well. Just some standard one shot enamel. I'm going to actually be using some hardener to it as well, just because I prefer the look of it and the sign's gonna be outside. I don't really feel like having to seal coat it. It's gonna be whatever. So we're just gonna get started. I'm gonna mix up some paint. This is gonna be a background color. And then I will start to do some of the other steps in the class, some of the stuff I can film, just doing sketches and, and all that. Once I have that, then we'll just let it out and that will be the first class. So to get started, I have my one shot enamel right here. This is the ivory color here. It's a really nice stock color. It's really simple. It's clean enough. So I'm just mixing the enamel now. This stuff is also really toxic and you shouldn't do this inside. Yeah, this is all mixed up. A little enamel goes a long way. And we're going to throw a hardener in there. The more hardener you add, the faster this is going to dry and harden up. So just be aware of that. I have the hardener. I've already gone ahead and opened it because the safety lock is kind of a pain. So a little goes a long way with this as well. It's essentially a resin I'm putting in here. So I'm going to just do a little bit. That's probably even more than enough. You really only need a few drops of hardener. I want to do this kind of fast. So I put a little bit extra. And I'm going to mix the paint with the hardener. All right, so we're just gonna paint the surface here. I might actually do a different color on the edge. I don't know yet. So with the hardener, the enamel is gonna dry really quickly and become a much easier surface to work on. One shot paint is just that. You can do it in one shot. There's enough pigmentation in there to really get by with singular brush strokes when you're doing lettering. Uh, it's amazing stuff. It is toxic, it smells bad, it uses chemicals. You use chemicals to thin it out. But it's got such a nice look and clean feeling to it once you get used to it. And if you wanna get into the sign painting or doing more lettering stuff, I mean, this is, this is the main tool you're gonna to be using, so get used to it. And this will actually kind of level itself out. If you see the brush strokes, it's actually the brush strokes from the gesso. This paint is an amazing tool and material once you get used to how it works. I honestly, if I could just paint strictly with enamels and not die before the age of 30, I would do it. This stuff is just so amazing. But if you don't have a proper space to work in and you're working with them all the time, it takes a toll on your health for sure. So don't do what I do. There's a disclaimer, but you're gonna do it anyway. So I'm not gonna, I don't, I'm not gonna judge. I'm doing the same thing, it's cool, man. But don't do what I do and paint with noxious fume paints in your house. It's, it's just dumb. Sweet, so this has got a good coat of enamel on there. It is already starting to dry really fast. Well, that's, that's about it. So we're gonna let this dry. Okay, so I looked at some references. I got them pulled up here, made like a little bit of a grid, gave myself a margin. So this is actually, these are the corners of my piece. But I looked up some number references, found some stuff I like, and I'm gonna just kind of sketch from these and we're gonna make a simple sign. We are back, I got everything I need now. I have my sketch done, I've done all the layout stuff doing the final layout now uh, on this kind of beat up piece of tracing. And now I'm just gonna outline it with a darker pencil. So I actually let this dry for quite a while. 
We have the artwork now where we want it to be. We're gonna keep pressure on the paper. I'm gonna grab just a, a pen. We're gonna lightly trace everything. My apartment building is blue and white. So I have a blue can, white here, a can of black. I'm gonna fill this with a brighter blue or like a lighter blue, not a brighter blue. And to do that, I'm gonna mix a custom color. All right, so I only need a little bit of white. Next, we'll grab blue. All right, so I gotta add a great color right now. I have this magazine next to me that I'm gonna use to palette my brushes. I have a couple different brushes pulled out right now, some flat brushes. And we'll just get the majority of the bold lines figured out, and then we'll move into some of the more complicated shapes. I haven't sign painted lettering and numbers in quite a while, so this is just getting back into it, and this is for that Skillshare class. All right, so we're gonna start with, there's two brushes that I have that would be fine for this to start. They're both flats, they're stroke brushes, one fourths, both of them, one's a bit shorter, one's a little bit longer. One's actually meant for sign painting, it's natural hair, the other one's synthetic. So there's some brush oil left on these brushes from when I put them away last time, and we're gonna clean that off. So I'm just gonna dip these in some thinner, get these nice and cleaned up, and then we'll pal with the brush, and we'll do some strokes to get started. The thinner is just here to strip off all the oil that we have on the brush, and then we're just gonna start paling our brush. So what I do is I'll dip the brush in the paint, we'll brush a little bit off, so you can see that the brush is all floppy, it's loaded with some paint, and I palleted it out on the magazine so the bristles are nice and full. I'm going to use my hand as a support, I'm a left-handed, so this is what I have to do to get a decent stroke. Not bad. It's been a while, but uh, not bad for my first time in quite some time. And the other thing that's good about the um, the hardener too is that it does help level your paint out so that's one thing that I really like about it as well other than being a extra safety precaution against it from bubbling up or anything like that and I'm using my other hand as a support support my wrist and my my hand movement and I'm rotating this sign around but you typically would not do this you'd have it you know, if you were doing this on a wall or something, you wouldn't do that, but I'm just doing this for fun, so I have the privilege to do what I want. And that gives you a nice, clean, consistent line. So I'll put pressure down, and I'll lean to one side, then I'm pulling a sharp corner. And I'll start to twist my brush as I need to, to get in those tight grooves. And there you go. That's how you get those... Uh, Really nice, smooth, single stroke pulls and everything. You, you just angle and turn the brush. All right, I'm back. I just cleaned the brush off real quick. Enamel's looking pretty good. I think it still needs a little bit more time to dry and set up. While that's happening, I'm gonna mix the other darker color. Now using black is going to be a little bit different than adding white to a blue base. So if you do genuinely like the like the sign painting stuff or the like lettering videos, definitely let me know. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And then start paletting. These brushes palette a lot differently. And because they're a snappier brush, you got to be a little bit careful with your stroke. And they're a bit more deliberate. You can't really go... You'll see what I mean in a second when I go to pull some stuff. You'll be like, well, it looks a lot different on how it works. It does work very different comparatively. So it is very snappy and responsive, but if you're not careful and you go too quickly or it, it pulls up too quickly because it's really snappy, you'll get that section right there that's not a nice clean stroke. It's because the brush is pulling itself up as you're turning it quickly as you relieve the slightest amount of pressure it does that so that's why i like the other that's why i like natural hair brushes more personally so 
So it's I'm been filming for a while. I'm definitely gonna be time lapsing a lot of this. Obviously, we're gonna load up the brush now and repal it. Yeah, it's a very thick stroke. I'm not super gifted with these, so I'm gonna do my best. Hopefully, it doesn't look terrible. I know there's probably other brushes that I could use or like other techniques. I don't know them, so. If you do, or you can suggest a better technique, please feel free to put that in the comment section below. I'm not gonna get offended at all. I'm not a, I don't see myself as like a, you know, professional sign painter or anything like that, or pinstriper, nothing of the sort. So don't feel bad. I'm not gonna be upset or offended. Um, as I'm paddling this, I'm actually giving the, the brush a slight twirl to really get the paint throughout and get a nice starting point on there. There's plenty of paint now laid down on the palette. Okay, here's the scary part. We're going for the first line. We're gonna just take it slow. Hope I don't mess this up too bad. We'll just go for it. I'm just gonna place the brush down. Nice and slow and that's the hardest part they say is when uh, you first start using like a lining brush like this or a scrolling brush putting the brush down and doing it with confidence and knowing that you're going to be fine. I'm definitely overthinking it, so we're going to start with our one. We're going to start with this five. Boom. All right, that wasn't so bad. And if I do this fast enough, I can actually go back with my other blue and do some touch-ups if needed. So I figured I'd try this Skillshare challenge uh, while I was filming that vlog and intro. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to stick to it. It's a new week. It's Monday. I'm going to go through and I'm just going to go for it and do it all. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to film as much as I can each day and try to do a little bit more and, and really keep up on that and just really see how much I improve artistically or creatively by do, taking Skillshare classes every day because they're always marketed towards me. I've had the Skillshare membership for a long time and I have definitely learned things on it, but I'm always stressed out about trying to like get work and this, that, and the other thing. And I never make time to utilize it. And I'm like, I'm spending money on this. I have like a year subscription I bought while I, when I was in less like financial struggle. And uh, I still got like, quite a few months left on it, so I'm like, I gotta use it. So I'm gonna try to use it and see how much I can improve. I think it's a great thing in general for creatives, but let's really see, let's put it to the test. <laughs> 